Welcome back, part three. Uh, while I'm waiting on this side, uh, let's talk about the driver's side, the good side. We can go ahead and start building this side up. We, we can do that because this side um, is actually the first one to get timed. You can see the chain on the back here. I've gone ahead and uh, timed this up, and I'll explain that to you. Um, if you look here on the, well, first off, you lock the cams uh, in position with this tool here I showed you earlier and in part two and then on the camshafts you look you see some yellow marks on the chain you see this yellow mark right here it lines up with that tab right there on the pulley on the gear and then on this side there's a yellow mark and it lines up with a tab down there you can see that that tab right there Okay, so that's for the cams, and then down here there's a white mark, and it lines up with a dash embossed into the plastic uh, nylon guide that's down here, alright? And then, as we look up here, I've got the tensioner arm on, you can see it here, with its uh, black plastic clipped on there. The pin is still in here, so, so this guy can still move around. We're not going to pull that pin yet because i got to show you something uh, we've got to do. All right, so I've also got to replace the oil lean nozzle down here. It's this guy. It, it's bolted in right here. Uh, it's got some oil jets that shoot oil right onto the uh, sprocket right there. When this side's timing chain, the right-hand side timing chain broke, um, it broke the nozzle for itself. So I got a new one of these coming. Uh, really hard to find. It's like 70 bucks for this thing. And it's not much to it. But anyway, um, let's talk about finalizing the timing. Both of the variators are loose. I've cracked all these bolts uh, loose. So you can move this variator around slightly. All right, you got to pre-load, pre-tension these. And you do that by using this guy. You put about 25, I think the exact number is 23 foot pounds, but I'm gonna do 25 foot pounds uh, and preload it. And then while it's preloaded, then you cinch down um, the T40 Torx bolts right here on the variators cam gears. Let's continue some show and tell. Uh, the new timing chain kit, this is an old arm. This is that bad one from the uh, passenger side. You can see how it started making an indent right here where the tensioner pushed out on it. The timing chain kit I got is the updated version. You can see that there is a steel pin inside this aluminum. Uh, that way the tensioner can press against that and not deform the aluminum. So. That's a good deal. Let me uh, get this camera on a stand and I will try to show you pre-tension this and locking uh, the variators down. Okay, the first step is to take out this uh, T30 Torx screw uh, from the oil suction tube. That's uh, this guy right here. Can you, can you pull it forward a little bit? On the driver's side, all we're going to do is pull tension on the intake camshaft on the Passenger side, once we get it all built up, uh, all we do is tension from the exhaust camshaft. You want to pull uh, the tension uh, on the static arm. You want that nice and tight. You want the tension arm of the timing chain guide uh, to be have the most slack when you pull the pin on the tensioner. Okay, so by having both of these variators, all these bolts here, just slightly loose... We can pull tension on both of these at the same time, and then we'll crank them down. This is going to be hard to show, but I'm going to do my best. So I'm going to put uh, 25 foot-pounds on it, just like so. Grab this guy. Oh, I think I lost my 25 foot-pounds. Hold on. There we go.
Crank that one down. Crank that one down. That one. And that one. Okay, I can let up here. The tensioner tool. Okay. You can see it's just got a hook underneath here, uh, right here that grabs onto a tooth of the timing sprocket and pulls it tight for you. I'm gonna torque these all these bolts down to spec. You can see here this chain really nice and tight up top there. That's what we want. Okay, now that that is all done, I put the oil suction tube uh, back in place. This tube is for uh, vacuuming. Uh, vacuum draw the oil out so you don't have to use the drain plug uh, on the oil pan That's back in place. I, I did read uh, that you should pull this pin uh, On this before the variators, but that's just uh, to make sure that you don't slip off This crankshaft gear down here, and we didn't do that. So on, on this other side um, I'll do that. I'll, I'll preload pre-tension the variators after Pulling the pin on the tensioner but now we are actually free to build up this entire side of the engine I can go ahead and put the upper timing cover back on I can go ahead and put the valve cover back on the fuel injectors the spark plugs the coil packs everything on this side can start getting built up as we are waiting on this side and now I guess is a good time to show you, um, this is a very uh, unique set of engines, this V6 and V8. The V6 version is literally as long as the V8, it's just missing a cylinder. So you got one, two, three here. See this big uh, gap back here, just empty space? They've just really blanked off that cylinder. You can see that the block is long, it goes all the way back here. So, I mean, it's essentially a, a V8 block in this thing, at least in length. Um, so it's still 90 degrees, so they used a split journal crankshaft to, uh, make the timing still even, uh, for balance issues. But anyway, um, interesting fact there. Let's build up this side over here. I'm going to start with, uh, razor blading, uh, this gasket surface, putting some Permatex gasket maker on it, and putting... The upper timing cover uh, back on and while I'm at it I'll with the razor blade I'll, I'll razor blade this uh, this side here and get it ready for its uh, new head gasket there's the upper timing cover on make sure uh, you get enough sealing on there you can see it oozing out there not too much but not too little either put on a uh, you don't want to do this a second time amount uh, on there because it's hard to get to easier now hard ones the whole engines together but anyway now that that is on got all uh, five bolts cinched down uh, make sure that you wipe off any that oozes out here on the valve cover gasket service on uh, both sides uh, later we will put a new dab on here uh, where this surface meets this surface uh, as we put the uh, valve cover on speaking of I think it's time to put the valve cover on Let's go ahead and uh, take off these camshaft locks right here, these wing nuts, pull that off and uh, get the valve cover on. Okay, the uh, cam locks are off the back there. There's no obstructions to get the valve cover on. I uh, razor bladed the surface. It's nice and clean. You want to do that, have a nice clean surface. Maybe even use a little bit of brake cleaner and clean up any oil residue off that. You can see I've got some uh, dabs of sealant. This is uh, Permantex uh, Ultra Black. Uh, where the two mating surfaces meet on each side. And uh, I went ahead and put the power steering pulley back on. It was easy to do right now, so I did that. And here's the valve cover. It's got its new, uh, new gasket in here, so I'm going to flip this over and set it on right now. Okay, there's the valve cover. It's on. It's cinched down. Um, 
I don't know what the torque specs are, but especially with these valve covers, it's easy to feel uh, how tight it needs to be. They, they've kind of got uh, stops uh, built into the hardware. So just start, uh, start in the middle and uh, work your way out just like you do with a uh, torque and a head down. Anyway, so that is all nice and tight. Now it is time to um, get the new, uh, or not new, but the fuel injectors back in. All right, let's talk injectors real quick. Um, I got a new seal kit for these before I put them on. At a minimum, you want a new uh, spacer ring. These get brittle, and you might have uh, heard them a little bit uh, pulling these things out. It's a new O-ring and a new uh, standoff here. So uh, there's the new parts there. We're gonna we're gonna build this up on this end. Now, the manual says you should put a new Teflon ring on here. And uh, I gotta tell you, these require a special tool and are very difficult. I just uh, clean this up with some brake clean and uh, put a little bit of uh, assembly lube on it and uh, put them back in. You can berate me if you want in the comments. And there is the uh, new seals on with just an ever so slight amount of uh, lubricant on the o-ring. And here it is uh, fitted to the uh, fuel rail. So I'm not going to show it, but I'm going to do that for uh, these other two and then set this fuel rail in place. There's the fuel rail in. Time to get the spark plugs and coil packs in. All right, uh, spark plugs and coil packs uh, are in and uh, bolted down. Let's, uh, let's lay the wiring harness over this and uh, wire this side up. Okay, wiring harness is all connected up there in the front. This side uh, is pretty much done. We got all the uh, cam position sensors and VVT actuators um, plugged in. So this is about all I can do until uh, we get this side taken care of. And I'm going to show you uh, what I'm going to do about that right now. So I originally had decided to go with plan B. I even bought a cylinder head. I'm um, going with plan B, if you remember from the end of part two. And this cylinder head was sold to me uh, as being in spec, pretty much ready to go. Um, but I didn't take their word for it, and I'm glad I did. I took some measurements. Check this out. Here is uh, 0 0.007. On the ends, we're good. In the middle. Sorry, my hand's in the way. Slides right underneath. Uh, 0 0.008 so now we would be out of spec for sure this goes in ends is fine in the middle just barely slides underneath there so we're about um, we're a couple thousandths off this head is warped so yeah, it's uh it's warped a little bit on the bottom. Not crazy bad, but it's not as flat as my original head. So this thing was going to have to go to the cylinder head shop anyway. I wasn't going to be able to just slap it on. Um, and also, one of the intake valves uh, was leaking. Yeah, so th this thing was going to have to get torn apart and have all the head work that the, basically the original head was going to uh, have to have done to it anyway. So as they say... Back to plan A. This is the original cylinder head. It was sent to the shop. I got all new valves put in there. They they cut the seats, ground the seats, put new valve seals, cleaned it up. So uh, here it is. The reason I didn't want to do this option is because it's a pain. Uh, this has solid uh, buckets, uh, cam followers in it. So you have to match these up. So the way you do this is... You put the cam in, and the cylinder you want to do, you put the uh, you put the lobes facing up at you, and just put at least one cam cap on there. And then you take your uh, feeler gauge, and the spec on this, it's in millimeters, but when you convert it, it's, um, oh, you see this, 0 .007, so it's 7 thousandths, to 9 thousandths. So I need to fit at least a uh, 7 thousandths uh, feeler gauge underneath here, and uh, I can do that. All right, and I've I've already done this um, one cylinder at a time, so it, it takes a long time. You, you take the cam cap off, 
uh, you put in one uh, bucket, put it back in with the low facing up, put the cam cap on, and do a feeler gauge. And then, so, and then after that, it's just kind of a game of moving them around as needed uh, to get your tolerance. So you need at least seven thousandths. And I'm going to do the same thing here on the exhaust side. I'm not going to show it, but that's how you set the valve lash on solid buckets. You'll see in these buckets that, um, I think I've showed this earlier in this series, that you see how that says 3.190. That's 3.19 millimeters, all right? Grab another one here, and this one says 3.25 millimeters. So, anyway, like... Like I said, you're going to have to mess with these and move them around. When you cut the seats, um, the valves are going to sit higher up, right? They're going to sit deeper into the seat, which push it, pushes the uh, the stem upward, right? So you got to make sure uh, that you get that tolerance in there. If you don't, you're either going to have ticking, you know, as the engine's running, it's going to go tick, 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 tick as it comes around. Or uh, worst case scenario would be you, you get them too thick and the valves never fully seat and you lose compression. That would be a, a bad deal. So anyway, it's kind of a tedious process. Um, but this is the route I'm going for now um, just because of what you saw with the issues I had with the other cylinder head. I am using its intake camshaft. I do have to do that because I, I needed an intake camshaft. Remember the other one split like right here. So... Uh, I will be using that. This needs cleaned up a little bit. It's got a little surface rust on it, but uh, this will work. Uh, I'll save the other head because uh, I got a 2016 Range Rover Sport with this pretty much the same engine in it uh, that had an overheat condition. So I might end up, uh, depending on how warped the other heads are on that car when I get to it, uh, I might end up using that head that I bought and decking uh, the bottom of it. Uh, making it flat again or heat straightening it and uh, using that cylinder head for the Range Rover. But anyway, this is the route we're going for now. I'm going to get all of these buckets uh, set. They're already set on the intake. I'm going to set them correctly on the exhaust camshaft. Take the camshafts back out. I will bolt the exhaust manifold onto the back and put a new head gasket on and set the cylinder head. Surface cleaned. New head gasket set in place. Exhaust manifold mounted to the head. Gonna go ahead and lift it and set it in place. Okay, there it is. The cylinder head is uh, set on. You'll notice that I took the buckets back off. You know, as you're maneuvering this in here, I just didn't want to run the risk of any bucket falling off there. So I'll put those back on here in a second. I got them all lined up in order. Uh, all the bolts are run down to their shoulders, uh, just, you know, finger tight basically. And now it's time to torque this thing. So you just kind of do it in a crisscross pattern starting in the center. Like a one, uh, a two, a three, four, a five, a six, and like seven, then and eight. Um, the torque sequence is 15 foot-pounds per bolt in that sequence, then 25 foot-pounds per bolt in that sequence then a 90 degree stretch, and then a 120 degree stretch, all in that sequence, so it takes a little bit to do. I'm gonna do that right now. All right, I've, I've moved ahead quite a bit here, so I got the head all torqued down. Again, it's like 15 foot pounds, 25 foot pounds, 90 degrees, 120 degrees, in a crisscross pattern moving from the inside out. I put all the uh, lifter buckets back in, in order that I had uh, set the valve lash on them, and uh, I went ahead and bolted in the rear water pipe on both sides uh, bolted in the this fuel line right here uh, bolts into the back of the cylinder head I put the uh, knock sensor uh, back on don't forget this uh, 10 millimeter bolt here underneath the uh, oil filter housing and put in the, uh, the t30s down here okay I went ahead and set the exhaust camshaft in but before I set the intake in I want to show you something all right sorry about the leaf blower neighbors doing some landscaping so here's the uh intake camshaft and i want you to take note here remember i talked about this little mark it almost looks like a uh, qr code uh, that needs to be facing down okay so just set this camshaft in that facing close to down as possible just like so Walking in there, so it's uh, 
no tension on it, alright? Then I'll put these, uh, put these caps on. And here is something I don't think you've seen yet. So there's another tool in the tool kit, the time and chain kit. Um, it's this guy right here. You take the variators off, uh, the cam gears, and you put this on, and it's got a half-inch drive uh, place for you to be able to put in a, a ratchet or whatever and move the cams around. You're going to have to move them around, at least on this passenger side. I found I had to do that. Uh, not so much on, on the driver's side for whatever reason. Um, anyway, you can get a good look at the cam locks back here. You can see how that's uh, locked in there. So I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but you gotta you gotta kind of move these move these cams around and slide this guy in and tighten it down a little bit, then move it over to here, and hopefully that doesn't slip off. And move this around, and then while you're moving around, uh, push this in, and then you just lock it down. But anyway, I, I got that done. So now um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put the variators back on. And start building up this side with a timing chain uh, but before I do that I'm gonna replace this oil nozzle right here and because uh, if, if I put the chain on without replacing this I'm not gonna be able to get, get it I don't think uh, the way it snakes around here and also I don't think I've showed this either this has been in here a long time and I've just forgot to video it but you can see this keyway here moving this guy in and out this is the high pressure fuel pump shaft. This, this drives the high pressure fuel pumps and that needs to be timed. That's how you time it here. You got this guy, uh, fits in where the vacuum pump goes, just like so. As long as that guy fits in there, you're good to go. I'm gonna pull this back out and put it in the toolkit. Replace that uh, oil nozzle there. And I'm going to get these uh, the chains and everything built up on this side. And all the timing components are routed as they need to be. Timing is set. Uh, since I showed so much of the other side, I just didn't show that much of this side. And you can see here the white mark on the chain is lined up with this uh, little embossed piece on the guide. Uh, the guides are cranked down. The pin is pulled. Uh, everything is nice and set here. Um, this is a good time to see uh, how we use this tool for the variators for the preload. Right here you can see that the tool is in a tooth right there. And then just goes on the, you know, like the, the flat spot of the variator back here. And you just put 25 foot-pounds of tension on this. Uh, you leave these bolts just slightly loose so your variators can move just a little bit but 25 foot pounds on this guy uh in a counterclockwise and it pulls tension on this and really tensions this side with the uh with the static guide so anyway it's time to take that tool off take the intake locks back there i have the uh lower timing cover i'm going to put a new seal on it and put that on Hey, before I put that uh, lower timing cover on, I realized I didn't show you the upper timing marks. You can see it here. Uh, there's the mark with the yellow uh, dot line on the uh, chain. And there's another one down here. It's hard to get an angle, but you can see the uh, mark on the variator and the yellow line on the chain. And again, I already showed you the, uh, the white mark uh, to the uh, little embossed piece on that plastic guide. Okay, lower timing cover. So this is worth showing, getting the seal in and out. Uh, you can see how there is uh, some some notches here. You basically, uh, I just used a chisel and a hammer and, and just tap this thing. You, you just tap it, and then you can slide it out uh, through the front. Here's the old one. You can see how it's got a, uh, got a slot right there, and then a stop. So just tap it down, you know, until it, uh, it hits the stop. These covers do have a neoprene seal around them, uh, being 10 years old almost, 9 years old. I, uh, I'm not going to trust that. I'm also not going to buy a brand new one. Uh, so I'm putting some uh, Permatex Ultra Black on this just for some added protection. Okay, uh, I'm going to put it on now. And the lower timing cover is on. So while we're down here and it's easy to see, I got a new seal uh, for this vacuum pump. Let's put that on. Here is the vacuum pump. Uh, this seal 
is just almost flat against the uh, the metal. You can see all this gum or <laughs> grime here. Um, the seal has uh, been allowing some oil to leak out. So got the new seal here. It is. It's uh, part uh, C two D three seven seven one. For this whole job here, I, I want to put most of the uh, parts. I'll link most of the parts in the in the description uh, down below. You can find links to them. Vacuum pump installed. Okay, now comes the time to put the crankshaft pulley back on. And I'm going to do this in a way, uh, I want to say that I don't recommend it, but um, do this at your own risk. Okay, they have a tool that they sell for this um, that you can take these bolts out. Uh, bolt in the tool and then it's got a, a nice long threaded uh, rod and, and you can just uh, put this thing on press it on with that tool I am going to choose to uh, and I've done this before with good luck so I'm doing it again um, this is the old bolt we're gonna put in a new crankshaft bolt but I'm gonna use the old bolt um, to help me uh, run this thing down and then uh, I will pull this bolt back out put in the new bolt and, and torque it down Okay, uh, if you see, there is a keyway here on the crankshaft that is at the six o'clock position. And you might have seen throughout this video, I, I put a mark here uh, that corresponds to a mark on the crankshaft pulley there. So I'm going to uh, slide this guy on uh, as much as I can, and I'll start this bolt. Remember that I have a 12. Where's it at here? Sorry, the light is shining on this thing like crazy. It is a 12.9. You can see it there, 12.9. It's lefty tidy. It's reverse thread. You have one that has a 10 on here. It's probably a normal thread, right? Ready tidy. So uh, I'm gonna put this on here, and I'll get back with you. There she is. She's on. So the torque spec for this is 150 foot pounds plus three quarters of a turn. That is quite tight. Um, you know, if you just want to do 150 foot pounds in like half of a turn, you know what? No more, more power to you because, uh, man, it takes a lot of strength and it really feels like you're going to break something. That is, uh, that is one tight bolt. Anyway, that is done. Uh, the reason that they don't want you to use uh, a bolt to run the pulley in is you run the risk of stripping the threads in the crankshaft. And of course, if you do that, I mean, you're tearing your whole engine down to put a new crankshaft in. So, you know, I. It could happen, but uh, I have done this quite often. It's real simple that you just oil up the uh, inside of the pulley there and the crankshaft, lube it up good, and then um, just walk it on very slowly and just pay close attention. If things start to bind up on you, stop, uh, pull it back off, realign it, and uh, try it again. Anyway, that's on. Now it's time for the upper timing cover. And the upper timing cover is on. Uh, remember to razor blade both surfaces. Put a decent amount of sealant. Not too little, not too much. This is a perfect amount. You just got just a tiny bit squeezing out. The saying goes, if it's uh, squeezing out, it's also squeezing in. Um, so I think that was uh, just the right amount. Anyway, uh, make sure that you clean the uh, mating surface is there because it's going to be a second until we get this valve cover on. We don't want any uh, any bit of sealant that came out of here uh, drying on us. Now I'm going to pause what I'm doing up top here. I'm going to remove these cam locks. I'm going to get underneath the car. I'm going to remove the uh, locks on the flywheel and bolt the, bolt the exhaust and bolt the starter back in. So this is a very difficult area to uh, film, so I kind of had to put everything back together, and then I'll just kind of show you how it went back together. The exhaust, it's two bolts here, you got a you got a 15 millimeter nut on the back side over here, and you got a 15 millimeter nut on uh, the top side. I don't know, you're not going to be able to see it. Anyway, um, so the exhaust goes on, and then the, the start will go back on. You have the alternator lead wire coming back here. You have the main battery positive coming here. You have the main battery negative uh, coming over here. To get the starter out, all you have to do is pull this heat shield, these two 7 millimeter bolts right here. And underneath there, there is a 
13 millimeter bolt I'm touching it right there that guy and uh, this bolt here that pinches the negative cable those are only two bolts that you need to remove uh, to get the starter out and then over here is the crank shaft position sensor uh, back in last thing I'll show you here is the oxygen sensor wire this is this guy right here follow him along and he goes up the uh, goes up the cylinder head there okay let's go back up top back up top here's the valve cover new gasket is in uh, you can see that these things I uh, talked about earlier have uh, some stops down in there um, when they bolt onto the the head here um, so I've put the RTV right there and right there we're gonna flip this thing over and set it on valve cover is on remember to do good mechanical practices once you set it on start all the bolts at least a few threads by hand okay and get them all started and start in the middle start in the middle out and then just work your way out okay let's do the uh let's do the fuel injectors next fuel rail and fuel injectors are in of course i didn't show that uh in part two i, I show replacing the, the seals on that so um let's do spark plugs and coil packs okay there's the spark plugs and the uh the coil packs in i also uh cinch down the uh high pressure fuel supply rails here uh and attached them here and uh there's a bolt t40 down here that uh, bolts to the cylinder head let's wire it up she is wired for sound we got the cam position sensors wired up we got the variable valve timing actuators wired up there's a grounding cable right here that needs uh tightened down got all the coil packs wired up got all the fuel injectors wired up there is a fuel pressure sensor in the back that is plugged in there's another grounding cable in the back Another 8 millimeter uh, nut goes over one of the valve cover bolts. That is all wired. Okay, this is a good stopping point. Thanks for watching part 3. I know this has been kind of long. Stay tuned for part 4. We're going to finish this thing up. We're going to start part 4 off with um, the supercharger intake, installing that, and then getting all the hoses, the belts, and all this other stuff, the cowling in the back, getting this fuse box back down. We're going to finish this sucker up in part 4. Thanks for watching.